Today we will look at the multimeter I have, how to change its battery and fuse, how to measure components parameters such as voltage, currents, nominal values, etc. I have unit UT85D multimeter. It's relatively cheap Chinese multimeter that costs around 35 bucks. So it's not extremely expensive, but it's also not very cheap. The most annoying thing about actually any multimeter is when you need to measure something, but the battery is discharged. And when the battery is discharged, it measures inaccurate data with a terrible error. Wrong voltage levels, components nominal values, and multimeter usage becomes impossible. So to replace the battery, you need to remove the protective rubber cover, remove the screws, remove the top cover, and here is the battery. Typically, multimeters run on a 9V battery. It's sometimes called 6LR61 or 006P. 9V battery has different sized positive and negative terminals, so you can't misplace it in a multimeter that also has different sized cutouts. So you cannot reverse the polarity, even if you want to. And with the fuse, the situation is kind of the same. They installed in special mounts and can be easily replaced. To know which exactly you need to have, look at the marking at the fuse. If there is a marking. Or, like in my case, there is a silk screen on the PCB with the fuse parameters. For example, this multimeter has two 0.5 amps fuses. And if you cannot find any marking, you can look at the maximum multimeter channel current that is written here and pick the closest fuse value. But the fuse max current must be higher than the maximum channel input current, so take it into account. Now let's have a look at what this multimeter can do and how to use it. Measurement options are specified on the case. For example, these two channels are responsible for voltage, resistance measurement and diodes testing. These two responsible for the high current measurement. These two for low current measurement. And the middle two for inductance, capacitance and transistor amplification coefficients measurement. Also, to pick what you want to measure and its range, there is a rotating switch. So here you can pick AC voltage, DC voltage, resistance, diode tester, inductance, capacitance, DC current and AC current. And what is extremely important is that in case of AC current and AC voltage, multimeter will show you root mean square value, not a peak value, so be aware of that. Also, you always must remember that measurement is proceeded with some tolerance. That's around 1% for the voltage levels and 2.5% for capacitance and inductance. So yeah, in reality you measure values with some error. Now let's measure something. For example, voltage. Put props into corresponding sockets and pick voltage measurement. Let's measure a voltage of a battery. And yeah, we measure 3.5 volts. Pay attention that if we reverse test leads, we will measure voltage with the minus. And like that we can find out where is the battery positive terminal and where is the negative. So in case of a minus value we know that red prop is connected to a negative battery terminal and another one to the positive. Another multimeter function is diode testing. Basically it does the same as resistance measurement, but also peeps when resistance is low. Using this mod you can find common connection points in the circuit as well as you can find short circuits in your scheme. And you can test semiconductor components with it. For example, I have a diode in here. And as you can see, we read infinite resistance when we apply plus to the anode and minus to the cathode. But if we reverse it, we will read some value. In that way we can check where is the anode and the cathode. And also we can check for a diode breakdown. For example, if you read small resistance in both directions, that means diode is broken. And also you can say that 500 ohms is too much for the diode in a direct connection. It can't be right. But actually, multimeter measures dynamic resistance of a diode, cause diode is non-linear component and its resistance depends on the voltage applied to it. So in reality, in your circuit with different voltages, this value will be another. If you want to learn more about diodes, check out my video about them. Ok, let's now measure resistance. To measure it, just turn the switch into resistance measurement mode. And for example, I know that max value of this potentiometer is 10 kilo ohms. So I choose 200 kilo ohms range. And just like that we can measure resistance. Another thing we can measure is inductance. For example, here I have a solenoid. It consists of a huge amount of copper wire vines and basically represents a huge inductance. To measure it, put leads into a proper sockets, change the measurement range and measure. And we got 8 millihenries. And also what is extremely important, be careful with the measurement range. For example, when I measure it with the maximum range, I have 0.02 henries which is 20 millihenries, and is not correct value. But if we switch the range to a smaller one, measurement is correct. So remember, always proceed measurements with the lowest range you can to increase accuracy. For the capacitance it is the same, but only thing you need to remember is to be careful with charged capacitors, especially high voltage ones, they can easily damage your equipment. 
Now let's measure current. I have a laser diode, and to measure its current we need to put test leads into a proper sockets, change the range, and put multimeter leads in series with the diode. In case of voltage we put probes in parallel, but in case of current measurement we need to put them in series. And to supply the circuit I will connect it to the battery. At this moment you can put a like for my skill to hold everything with my hands. Do not touch high voltage wires like that though. So we measured 15mA current with the minus, cause I connected positive multimeter probe to the negative battery terminal. And for the AC currents and AC voltages measurement is the same. But as I already said, you measure root mean square value, not the maximum value. To measure transistor amplification coefficient you need an extender, but personally I never use this function. It's always easier to look at the transistor datasheet and find out the value there. So now you know everything about the multimeter. I hope it was useful. Bye.